What the f***? I was going to say, for now, the, the first time you're going to be drunk. <laughs> I don't understand why you're coming You know, you know what? I swear to God, I think about that all the time. I say to myself, wow, like for people who have already started drinking alcohol or coffee, I think they, they kind of need it. If, as, long, you know, as long as they're handling yeah, it responsibly. Yeah, yeah. For you, you've avoided it for so long, that you probably fuck yourself up. I think, yeah. I don't know what would happen. I Because I remember my parents saying to me like something about caffeine, like offhand passing. They're like, well, you'll need it one day. Like, wait till you have kids. And I was like, I don't know. Sometimes I, which it's probably true, but sometimes I wake up at six and edit till three a.m. Yeah. And then I go. To, I feel awful. Yeah. But what's the benefit? Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. Anyway, anyways, today I pulled some of your hottest watch opinions offline. Yep. And put them in this note, and yep. we're gonna react to them and talk about them. Yeah, let's react to some of these things because some of them are a little bit wonky. But unpopular watch opinions that. Um, maybe some have truth, maybe some I mean, don't. I, you know, my unpopular watch opinion is is that I kind of like you blow. So that's same, yeah, that's same. You know, yeah. My, so. uh, mine is even more unpopular because I don't say I kind of like it. I'm like, no, I think those are great. Yeah, look yeah. at that. Okay, so before we get into the rest of those, uh, who's our sponsor for today? Uh, you can't hear me. Oh, yes, I can. I have transparency mode on. Oh. Our sponsor today is headphones.com. Terrific. More on them and their uh, their headphones later. We are obviously, if you know how YouTube works, we are saving the most controversial opinion that I think uh, it's a bad one. People I would think. kill you if you said this out loud at a watch meeting. I'm going to try to defend this person a little bit, but yeah, it's it's a rough opinion. Yes, but let's. Start but off anyways, there. first one: a watch without a bezel, and there's exceptions. Obviously, a watch without a bezel looks weird. The top part it looks like a bald forehead, or it looks empty. So they don't mean without a, a tool bezel. They just mean without any bezel. Ooh, that's a good question. So, like, what's an example? Like, is an IWC Portuguese an example of a I watch think, without a bezel? I think my watch is a perfect example. Zenith and no Bible bezel. Shadow. No bezel for a chronograph. It does look... When you think about it... Like, it has like, no eyebrows. Exactly. Do you see that now? Yeah. Yeah, weird, right? I have a bezel. And address... You You have a bezel, yes. Okay, so yeah, we'll take it that way. Oh, a watch without a bezel. Look at my Revival Shadow. It does... Saying it with eye, without Tank eyebrows has no is bezel. perfect. Is, is it more with rounder watches? Oh, you know what? Look at this. This is a domed sapphire crystal. I mean, all crystal. Rolexes have bezels. I can't think of a single Rolex without a bezel. Right. And this is a domed sapphire crystal. Yeah. And I think when I when I read that and then I look at this, I'm like, oh, yeah, I kind of do see that. Paddocks have bezels. I'm trying to think. What are watches without bezels? Wow. Google watches. It's a watch without a bezel. Okay, hold on. Anything? No. Apparently all the watches I like have bezels. This is killing you, isn't it? It's driving me nuts. I never even thought about it. Wow. I guess I never really thought about it. <laughs> but a watch without a bezel looks weird. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the, the Paddock the paddock 2428, which is the Paddock my grandfather has, doesn't really have a bezel. Right. And that that doesn't look too bad. No. So, okay. So I, th I feel like we could say... A lot of watches, if not done right, I think what makes this look weird is that there's this chunk of titanium on the side yeah. that a bezel doesn't cover. But I guess that is not that unpopular. It's a weird opinion, but maybe not unpopular. Well, that was, that yeah. was a good first <laughs> I guess I never thought about it. Watches without, okay, you happen to have one on your wrist. I happen but to, I yes. can't think of another watch without a bezel. Uh, keeping Cartier out of the conversation or keeping, I guess, a lot of... I mean, dress, like dress like square watches. Sure. Right? And right. I mean, those watches look great. Yeah. But I'm trying to think of round, round bezel-less watches. I mean, maybe if you go into modern independence, like, I mean, like Moser's, like, do those have bezels? I mean... I mean, no. Yeah, the look Moser Streamliner doesn't have a bezel. Wow. Uh, I think that kind of looks funny. The other Moser's that I, I like, the more endeavor, the Endeavors have bezels, and I like those yeah. a little bit more. Um, wow. Yeah, maybe the bezel-less thing does look fucking weird. Wow. Yeah. That, that honestly, now that I'm looking at this Moser, I'm like, yeah, it has no eyebrows. It has no eyebrows, has and that's no why I don't eyebrows. like it. Wow, what a what a hot take from from a commenter. Watches no bezels. Look Some great. famous watch I designer wouldn't have, watching if, this. If that person said that to me, like at a meetup, like, hey, unpopular opinion, watches without bezels look weird. I'd be like, cool, man, good to see you. Good I'd to be, see you really again. be well. I would have left. <laughs> then you do that. In the car on the way home, and be like, that guy was an idiot. <laughs> Wait. Wait a minute. And then everything flat. My you look flashed. in the mirror, you realize you've been shaving your eyebrows for years. <laughs> like, that looks weird, doesn't it? 
<laughs> What's the next opinion? Tudor, Tudor is oh, well, you can no, take no, it away. No, no, Tudor is only successful because they make boring watches. Mm. I gotta kind of agree with that. And, and, there, and there's sometimes, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the type of boring that Tudor is. Tudor is not very inventive. Uh, Tudor is a little bit plug and play. Let's get real, guys. Sure. Uh, the quality is there, no doubt. There is a, there is a price on quality and well built watches that I feel like Tudor grabs aggressively and it's like, yeah. look, it T- doesn't have this crazy DNA. It's a nice watch. It looks how you think a yeah. dive watch yes. would look. Yes. And we're done. Do you it's want a, to buy it? It's a nice, it's a nice, more affordable, more aggressive Rolex. Do you want it or not? Right. And that is true, and it works. And they are, a, they are a little bit boring. Now the question would be, and 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 you know, if if they weren't boring, would they be as successful? And the answer is yes. If what they, what if daring things do you think they could take? Oh, here you go. Go. Yeah, if they introduced more da- daring tactics into their collection. I think they'd still do very well, so long as they, so long as they kept their core collection. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, they could, they could do well. What would, what would be daring? I suppose if you started adding texture to some of their watches, yes, that could yes, be interesting, yes. like honeycomb dials. Um, oh, that'd be that, so cool if they pull a lot from heritage designs, but no one pulls from the dials. I feel like they're like, well, dials we can use a computer to make look cool. Yeah. Now. I mean, but, yeah. the the the, the, the what was it, P. P01, that wasn't a boring watch. True. You know, I think it was an ugly watch. It was. Some people said it was the most interesting watch. It was one of the most interesting watches, and if it were smaller, it would be perfect. I had no intention of buying it, but when we went to London, I had to see it. Yeah. Which, if I was a customer, that would get me to the Tudor booth. Yes, which is smart. Yes, I agree with that. I agree with that. So, yeah, I mean, I think that an unpopular opinion is probably fairly correct, but they own that. Right. They, they, you know, they don't own it, but they, they, that's, they, they understand that that's their. But that's their function in the watch world. That most guys say, I want to buy a nice watch. Mm -hmm. I can't get this watch or that watch. This is a fantastic watch. Has great heritage. And it's not offensive. Everybody's going to like it. And I can get a green dial. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah. Tudor is... uh... Is Rolex boring? Because we have this discussion. I have my Explorer 1 back. And we were chatting. And you're like, oh, glad you got it back. And I was like, it's really boring. There are some things about Rolex that can be boring. But if you look a little bit closer, Rolex isn't very boring. I mean, even on a technical level, if you go to their foundry, maybe a lot of the reasons why people buy Rolex are a little bit boring. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're just a a very human thing to like. Sure, yes. Uh, Yeah, just pop culture. Yep. Um, but Rolex is not boring. Uh, Rolex puts a hell of a time, a lot of time into the research and development. And then, then even if you look at some of the the things that they'll still do with their natural stone. I mean, their onyx dial now is beautiful. Uh, yeah, they still Rainbow do. So, is, you know, regardless of price. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, look at the way that they make some of these dials too. I mean, they really put a lot of technical effort in. Mm-hmm. So Rolex is, you know. The reason they're popular is probably boring or only interesting to a psych, you know, a first year psych student. Sure. You know, but sure. but no, Rolex is, is heavy sh- I will also say, and everybody, whenever we talk about Rolex too much, people are like, oh, another Rolex fanboy. I will say Rolex has perfected case design. Yeah. To the point where you just look at the shape and uh, maybe it's something to do with nature or whatever, but you're like, that's a, that looks like, even though my Explorer one is boring. Yeah. When I look at the watch at, at basically any angle, I'm like, wow, the way it bends and the way the side angle, yeah. anything, it looks perfect. It the would slimness. Be, it would be very interesting to find like, I don't know, some untouched, out of touch tribe and to show them watches. We would do, we would do f- other things first with them because there are other <laughs> things that their opinion would be, you know, but uh, yeah, there's all these scientists doing all these experiments. And hold on, the you have a watch tray. Hold on, wait, I want to speak what? to you. This is so London branded. Do you, th- do you, think, that, well, you think that Rolex is as good as people think they are? Which one's beautiful? They grab, they grab Hublot we're like, oh my God. Oh my God. Wow, bizarre. How bizarre. I told you guys. <laughs> That would be interesting, though. That would. That actually would really be interesting. Okay, the third one. Richard Mills are cool watches. Um, so that is not an unpopular opinion among a, a, a among pretty, tennis players. That among get tennis paid players, by also Mills. super like you know like kind of like you know obviously very wealthy guys that are usually on the larger side like they're just larger people uh, that want to be young like Richard Mills are very yeah. popular among for the guy that among, buys the group of girls that are 18 when he's 40 yes, around of drinks yes yeah. they're very popular among the the 50 year old or the 40 plus year old guys that are a little bit out of shape and like 
are way too old to be wearing high top sneakers. But their arms still kind of look good. They're kind of strong. <laughs> yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. That's what Richard Mill. That's where it's king. Right. Um, and they get credit by everyone. Like that is that well wealthy kind of. Everyone thinks that you know it's it's a, a cool thing in theory. Yeah. But I think that it's also a little bit cringy. Yeah. I think that Nailed a lot it. of Nailed people it. that do you know have a little bit more taste and like more elegant watches that maybe are equally boring or maybe more boring and opt for not a lie you know because you know they're a little bit more they're a little you know, low-key they're like i'm not gonna wear for then the rest they're of say watch. like oh well you know uh, nouveau riche kind of thing yes yes i get that yes you know i get that yes you know i have cousins like that you know like yes. the richard mill kind of guys yeah. um that being said, yes, I think the prevailing opinion among everyone else uh, is that they are not very cool and they're more cringy. I will and s- I kind of get it. I, I will say I get it, especially the client base, I feel like, which I apologize if you're wearing one. I think it is a very cool watch. But the client base kind of sells it a little bit, sells it like down the river. But if they made, you know, it's always, the, it can sustain this force or whatever. That's why we give it to tennis players and all this. If they made a smaller, slimmer one with the same basic rubber strap, cool carbon fiber top mm. and bright color for an affordable price. And affordable could be 15000 whatever. Well, no, it would, it would be totally antithetical to the brand. I mean, they have to be unaffordable. But I'm saying that would be a yeah. cool watch. Yeah. I would love that watch. It would just never happen. The brand would never do it because then it's not, that's not a tough watch to get anymore. I don't even know what the retail is on, on these watches. What is the retail on, no on, you know, is it, it 80000 Sixty to one point three million. Yeah. Okay. Sixty thousand. But I think they're they're hard to get, so you can't even get them at sixty thousand. Yeah, you know. Right. I mean, the, the the design there could be cool. It's too big. It's too thick. It's too like, obviously too expensive. But yep. shrunk it down, rubber strap. I'd be like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And an affordable affordable price. Have you seen this Aventi watch? Have you seen this? Whoa. No. So it's a. Like a did I just describe what they make? Ten thousand dollar watch. Yeah, you did. Wow. And they're making a play on social media now, like they're sponsoring producer Michael and uh, and Mr. Wonderful. Really? And so they're kind of, they're riding that Do either Richard of those guys Mill. need sponsors? Uh, I think they just got like a free watch. I know, I know. Um, they're tourbillons, wow. I believe. The cases are sapphire, which is very interesting. That is very interesting. And uh, and they're big and they're, they kind of, they kind of ride that, 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 that way train, that tra- exactly you know under fifteen thousand wow. uh, dollars i believe like they started at like eight thousand i'm not seeing them in the watch like uh in the watch world though uh very much i'm not seeing them get a lot of attention yeah you um, know what they're almost there i feel like the case shape is kind of eh. but yeah but that's basically exactly what i just kind described. of doing yeah exactly so it'll be interesting to see like yeah you know, as tastes continue to to change they are cool if you look if you squint and look in the sun for a little bit yeah you know yeah. what i mean Before we continue into our next unpopular opinion, a quick uh, message from our sponsor of today's video at headphones.com. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me about these Focals. These are Focal Batiste. These are really the perfect headphones for both of us for two different use case scenarios. Yeah, I'm a much more you know casual listener. I love good sound quality and I love uh, being isolated, right? I love kind of noise being able to, to, right. to zero in on my, on my computer um, and not only have the noise around me canceled, but full, full sound. Uh, I usually listen to like something very without lyrics, like a classical music, yep. and I really just want to be on my own island while I focus on my work. Yes, right, which yep. I do constantly when I'm traveling for business. Yeah, um, you use these in a very professional setting. Yes, and also for that too. But yes. the nice part is, if I want to go for a walk or if I'm just hanging around the house, I'll do what you do. I'll use the Bluetooth. I'll yep. have them just you know whatever. But if I am editing and I need to have clear sound, not necessarily engineered to be super bassy or something, because some people want that, but that is exactly the opposite of what I want. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, same, when they're just listening to music, but I can actually plug these in through USB-C into my computer, use the DAC in the headphones, mm-hmm. switch to DAC mode, and get louder, clearer sounds, so I can hear everything when I'm editing, wow. and make sure there's no you know little ghost sounds or something like that that I should edit out. Yeah. So that's fantastic, but on top of all of that, these are expensive headphones, but 
even headphones.com we've been talking a lot they're like you can clearly see why yeah they're worth the price well even correct? the build quality even in holding them before you before you even test the audio quality is amazing they're cold oh they're oh, yeah right magnesium they're, they're on the aluminum, top yeah. aluminum on the sides the drivers are made in france by focal and if you don't know focal they have some insane like the utopia at five thousand dollar headphones yep. but these come in at the sweet spot for 99% of people yep. where you if you are an audiophile you'll be thrilled and if you're not and you need sometimes wired sometimes not you'll yep. also be thrilled agreed that's what's so amazing yeah headphones.com also has a 365 day return policy yep. so if you're not thrilled you can send these right back yep. which is part of the great thing about headphones.com they're always focused on super luxurious audio yep. but for every single price point that you possibly need so exactly. these are a great gift yeah I, I just think that you know people people who appreciate fine you know artisanship mm -hmm. like we do in watch it, it just makes sense to look at, at other spaces and fill your life with things, uh, other things that are of equal quality, things that are made well, things that are made by brands that have a lot of self-respect, uh, yeah. as opposed to just churning things out and, ch and chipping them out and, you know, kind of being just the just the budget option. Um, I prefer to spend money than I prefer to waste it. Right? Yeah. That's very big difference. And having just all of the utility in one device, like this also has a transparency mode, so if we're sitting here and I'm listening to something I could also hear things outside yeah there's a soft noise cancellation which you're aware of and then there's an aggressive noise cancellation. which is what I've used on the airplane exactly, exactly. which I is love amazing it. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic thank you guys so much for, for sponsoring today's video guys I highly recommend you head over to headphones.com and take a look at not only these focals but their entire selection uh, it's it's a fantastic site and uh, I mean they have the domain they have they have they are headphones.com you shouldn't you're be right. going anywhere else exactly so take a look Finally, this is the hottest topic here. I'm going to pull up the website. Um, do you want to read it? Outside of the Reverso, JLC watches could be mall watches. That's a lot to say about probably one of the most renowned watchmakers. Of all time. Yes. Yeah, guys, that's just a bad opinion. Um, I I suppose, I, I, I presume... <laughs> I pull up the website right as you go, uh... I get it. Yeah. Uh, what I think you're saying is that the Master Ultra Thin is a minimalist watch that looks like something you might find in a mall. I believe that. I can also see it kind of with the Polaris. Like... Okay. Wow. Jeez. I mean, obviously it's more refined, but you know. Yeah, so... Yeah, it, uh, it may look like something you might find. I think the angle... I mean, you have to look a little bit closer. I mean, all minimalist things. Okay, here, here's a good example, right? Yes. The other day, I posted a photo on the Theo and Harris Instagram page. Okay. And it started a great conversation. I posted a photo of this Audemars Piguet, which is available in the Theo and Harris watch shop. I photographed it. Uh, it's beautiful. 18 carat, white gold, ultra thin, phenomenal Dress watch. watch from when AP, I feel like, was really writing the Pre-Royal pre Oak. Yes. You know, I, my comment was ultra thin, immaculate, and white, to which someone commented. I read the first sentence and thought it was describing Christian Zero, which is funny. Ultra thin, immaculate, and white. <laughs> he, called me, he called me ultra thin, which I love. Uh, okay. So here's, here's what someone commented. Change the logo, and that's a Daniel Wellington. Just because you... Sauce source source some logo on there. I oh no, they meant sauce. Yeah, just because you saw some logo on there. I mean, the dial is is flat and absurdly simple. The movement most likely a high end off the shelf. The case most likely manufactured by a third party. The hands look average at best. I love vintage AP, but this is mid. So here's what I here's what I commented back. From a distance, you're correct. Both designs, meaning AP, this AP and the Daniel Wellington, are minimalist, but the devil is in the details. The thickness and length of the three, six, and nine hour markers yes. make a world of difference for one. AP subtly differentiates those quarter hours. Simple, sure, but brilliant. The quality of the dials and cases as well, of course. Finally, the materials and movement. Again, I see your point from a distance. These two minimalist watches are similar, but quality often requires a closer look look. When you're working within the world of minimalism, you know, and this is the same thing even with Nomos in many, you know, yeah, 100%. It, it, yes. I mean, if you look quickly and without, you know, without a discerning eye, it could look like a cheap comp. Yeah. Fine. This, I feel like. But the, you need to look closer. The Polaris, you need to look closer and have some appreciation for the craft. 
Yes, not everything is this. You know, not everything is a brigade. You know, uh, 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 a tradition. Yeah, exactly. You know, that is so obviously well finished, so obviously a good watch. Some watches you need to you need to look closer at it and is, find the fine details. I also think. Well, I'll get, I'll get into the players in a second, but I also think the issue in 2022 is that you can copy and mold anything as fast as you want yeah like rolex will probably kill you if you make a watch that looks similar to rolex and sell yeah. it in a macy's but that's not saying that it can't be done right and then all of a sudden you'd be like well that just looks like a cheap mall watch yes. why get this if i can get that but now when we look at this polaris for example and when they do the side angle here you look at the brushing and how thick it is how beautiful the polishing oh, is oh it's it's beautiful. I mean, even the dial itself. Look at the the way the color changes. Look at the different materials used to seal the dial. I mean, look at the. It's not suppleness. It's like uh, look at the rounded around the date. Yeah, I mean, look yeah. at the even the round around uh, around the, the. It looks like a still lake. Exactly. I mean, look. That's that's levels of finishing. That's yeah, just right, amazing. Right. Yeah. You know. So yeah, could it look like a cheaper counterpart? Sure. Um, from a distance, I mean. Yeah. Um, but you have to look closer. That's the. That's the. Not everything is a is a you know uh, a tourbillon. Not everything is a is a is a you know a finely finished masterpiece that's in your face uh, on the dial. Uh, you need to. Yeah, that's why loops exist, right? You need to look closer. Well, and to keep your shoes tight. And to, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, loops exist because these things are worth looking at closer. Yes. Not just to fix something, but to admire it. And you I, know, I will say. Luckily, this comment is not from a single person. This is from an entire Reddit thread where someone was talking about watches and the style of watches. And they're like, I mean, when you really think about it, like the, I think they said the Polaris, I'm not sure which one. They're like, it's just, it looks like a mall watch. Or it was like half of you people buying your fancy watches don't realize there's like a very similar style in the mall and no one will ever notice the difference. Well, but and I agree with the fact that no one will ever notice the difference. I agree right, with that. Right. You, you, again, you can't buy watches for other people. I mean, that's not actually true. You, you can. You, you can buy it, Richard Mills for other people. Yeah, you can. It, you can buy Rolex for one hundred percent. Yes, yes, you know, yes, yes, if, yes. If you are in certain professional situations, the watch that you wear, the car that you drive, uh, the clothing that you wear, certainly has an influence on the way that you're perceived. Yes, one hundred percent. Yes. Um, that being said. Barring those very specific circumstances, right? Uh, yes. Selling, I don't know. I don't even know what situations it might be. I mean, you know, obviously, generally in metropolitan areas, generally, you know, uh, uh, like like real estate agents are often like high end real estate agents in the Hamptons often are very cool. They spend a lot of time working on their their you know uh, 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 you know uh, their look their, their aesthetic look. their yes. business essentially because you know uh, I, I suppose I suppose they want to just be socialites and people want to know them so you know it be, they become elusive these elusive rich cool people yeah. okay fine yeah there are other examples as well uh, that are much more subtle um, I know you know in an office environment um, I tell people all the time stop acting like an intern and stop dressing like an intern. It doesn't mean you need to wear an expensive watch, but right. but but if that you know if that, if that if that presumption, if you if you carry that presumption, which I think you should, um, then it it follows it, it rings true uh, in watches and in everything you do, uh, the way you speak, the way you do everything. Yes, you know. Yes. So so yeah, I mean you know, uh, it may it may look to many people like a cheaper watch from a distance. It shouldn't matter anyway. Yep. But uh, to the right people. It doesn't look like a mall watch. And I will end on this point. If you were given Daniel Wellington's, Michael Kors, whatever, you know, a, a ton of different watches, and you were given a very close-up image of just the crown mm. of all these mall watches and then the AP, mm. they're all same metal, same metal yeah. color. Could you tell which one's which? From a, from a distance? No, no, no. Micro close-up. Crown, 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 crown. Just from the crowns? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Immediately. Oh, immediately. And that Just is where the it's level lost. Of finishing on the exactly. Crown. The I can snipe alone. a cheap watch from the crown from 10 miles away. Absolutely. You know, the, 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 the amount of time that went to finishing a fine watch's crown is greater than the amount of finishing that went to finishing uh, the vast majority of watches, you know? It's and that's amazing. where it's like, okay, yeah, you have a blue circle on your arm. Yes, it could look like a mall watch. Yes. But 
If I can tell from the crown that that is an expensive watch, yeah, well, there's a big difference. One is a one is a piece of art, and one is a you know one is an Etsy you know uh, an Etsy Salvador you know, Salvador Dali exactly. crash inspired eighteen karat gold exactly. watch. It did just you know a funny story. Just just last week, I went for uh, I went for uh, uh, breakfast yes. up on the Upper West Side at Barney Greengrass, one of my favorite places in New York, and um, and you know that's a very you know. That's that's a that's a gathering place for a lot of wealthy people. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of families, and uh, and it's cool. It's a cool spot. Sure. So I walk in. I was wearing my white gold Pepsi, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and the only other people that I saw wearing a watch um, were was this was this table, and it was father, son, and son's family. Amen. Okay, and uh, no, they don't say amen. Huh. And uh, and the the father. Uh, was wearing no. I saw what the son was wearing. The son was wearing a rose gold uh, AP fifteen two hundred two. Mm-hmm. Right, not quite. Uh, I mean, it's certainly a hype watch. Yes. Not quite a Richard Mill in the sense that I can. St- I'm, I'm going to start judging you with a certain degree of likelihood that you're that you're just a hype beast. Sure. But you know, but it's, it's it's pretty close, yep. right? You also have fantastic taste because that is a phenomenal watch. Of course. But and he was he's, yeah, we actually spoke briefly and he was a very nice guy, um, but the father was wearing a uh, a paddock. Uh, um, it wasn't a perpetual. It was a it was a complicated paddock, uh, maybe a split second or something like that. Okay, and sure. I couldn't really snipe it out. The father was wearing a long coat. It was kind of tough, yeah. but I could tell that he was wearing a complicated paddock. And I said like, "That's funny. Like th- the dad has certainly a different." level of taste than the sun. Right, um, right. The, the dad probably thinks that the sun's watch is a little bit stupid. Exactly. And he probably thinks that one day you'll understand. It's a, Your watch you'll is a little too heavy. It's a little too flashy. Too, exactly. Yeah, right, exactly. right. And the dad was dressed like just like, an, like just like an old Jewish guy, you know? Yeah. And the son was dressed like a like a young, like kind of like, you know, a man about town professional, like with his Laura Piana joggers on, you of course. know? Yep. And I was like, that's funny. Like, I'm not, not, not to say that the son isn't successful, but, right. but you know, in, in all likelihood, you're clearly, you're your clearly. father has quite a bit of money, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, this is, you know, you, you, but the watches do say something. Yes, they do. Yes, you know, and uh, and and at the end of the day, when it comes down to the real big boy watches, the father in that scenario is probably the real client. Yes, you know. Yes, he's uh, you could just tell, right? He's probably, you know, the son's wearing the son's wearing a, a watch that retails for fifty five thousand. I don't know what he paid for it, and the father's wearing a watch that probably retails for two hundred and fifty five thousand. You right. know, and right. one one no one would notice, and one everyone would notice. Exactly. You know, so it's funny. It it, it also it really yeah. says a lot about you. Well, yeah, that's it. Done. No All more right. hot takes. No more hot takes. That's it.